in this message, brothers and sisters, because the church has the assignment of reaching all these folk. How do you get folks saved that's transgendered and don't know it's sin? How do you get people saved who are violent and don't know it's wicked? How do you get people saved who think they are an it or a they rather than a him or a her? You can't do this without power. Fresh fire, fresh wind, Holy Ghost. Hi, this is Bishop James Dixon. Welcome to the Empowered by Faith broadcast, a ministry of the Word of God that elevates your life according to faith. Let me tell you, we empower people to live by faith, walk by faith, and to operate in faith because when you walk by faith, you are unstoppable. Thank you for joining us for this message today. It's going to bless your life. This series this week is entitled Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire, Holy Ghost Power comes out of Acts chapter 2 about the day of Pentecost. So have your Bibles ready because you got to see it right in the Word of God. I'm a Bible teacher and I want you to get it. But before the message, watch this video to learn more about our ministry. We're actively engaged in ministry outside of the church. That's right, outside the building. We believe that the church will do at least 80% of our ministry to be outside where the challenges are. We are a battleship church. And so we're built to lift people out of poverty, built to elevate people out of oppression, built to deal with social injustices. We do that on the regular, not as an event, because that's our assignment. So when you join this church, and I know you're thinking about doing it, when you join this church, you become a part of a battleship church, not a cruise ship. We have a good time, but we're making a big difference, all right? Check out the video, and then I'll be right back with the message, Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire, Holy Ghost power is going to bless your life. These are perilous times for America. The social climate is impacted by racial injustice, a broken criminal justice system that unjustly punishes poor people and people of color. The ongoing story of police brutality against unarmed people has strained relationships between the community and law enforcement. And add to this the voter suppression movement, where states like Texas are enacting laws that are designed to decrease black and brown voter participation. So, what does the church do in the midst of this kind of social turmoil? Well, the church should be doing what Bishop James Dixon and the community of faith is doing. We are leading the fight for justice, equality, and righteousness. I am glad to be a part of a church that doesn't remain silent when unarmed men and women are being killed by police. Everyone knows that Bishop Dixon is God's voice for social justice and for positive changes in our society. Some people talk it, Bishop Dixon walks it. Yes, the community of faith keeps proving that it's a battleship church not a cruise ship. In addition to being an anointed preacher and pastor, Bishop Dixon is a real leader who serves to empower his community. So you see him in Austin at the Capitol, challenging lawmakers to pass laws to combat child sex trafficking. Bishop Dixon is there to fight against voter suppression. You see him standing with other leaders, speaking truth to power in behalf of the less fortunate. I am happy to partner with Bishop Dixon because I know he's not in it for himself. He's dedicated to the hard work of fighting for the people. That's why, my friends, you should partner with James Dixon Ministries. Praying and supporting James Dixon Ministries makes a much needed difference. So go to jamesdixonministries.org to become a partner today. We thank God for your support. And if you're looking for a church, a real church, a battleship church, look no further. You found it. It's the community of faith, and we welcome you to your new church family. Come on, say Pentecost carryover. Uh, I, I, can I just give you the goal of my message before I before I heard of my conclusion? Today, when I finish, I want somebody else to say, I'm gonna be a Pentecost carryover person. Because when I show up Monday morning, Thursday evening, when I'm walking around the neighborhood, I might run into somebody. And they're going to need me to have a Pentecost carryover. Uh, look at the text. The Bible says that uh, Peter and John are on their way to prayer meeting at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. 
This is broad open daylight. They're walking up to the temple at the hour of prayer and they encounter a man who's laying on the ground who's carried there every day to beg for money of those going into the temple. He had a convenient location to receive handouts, spare change from folk going to church. Uh, and he learned them well enough to know that uh, because uh, they were people going to church, they were charitable. Uh, and, and so, because church folk normally are at least kind of charitable. Uh, especially going into church, it's hard not to be charitable walking into church. <laughs> uh, you understand, because church folk want to get rid of their guilt on the way to church. Y'all you, 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 not helping me. I'm, I, I mean, you know, come on, talk back to You know when you're going to church, you try to check yourself a little bit. Uh, what did I do this week that might, God might be, what, what can I do on my way to church to try to get my record a little better? And, and, and so the man is carried every day to the church. He's outside the church. As people come on their way, he sees Peter and John about to enter the temple. And the Bible says that he asked them for some money. He asked him for, for, for money, not a miracle. He asked him for money. Uh, uh, now, now this, is not a, this is not an unusual routine for the man or Peter and John. Uh, Peter and John always went to the temple. Uh, but the, the, the difference is uh, it's after Pentecost. Had uh, you know, you're not understanding me. I, I, I'm saying he's used to Peter and John giving him change. But he's not used to Peter and John being able to give him a change. Somebody going to catch this. So the man asked them for money, not a miracle. Oh, stay with me if you can. I, I, I know I'm preaching, but pray with me. Look now. So he asked them for some money. And the Bible says that Peter uh, speaks up and has a conversation. Let me give you my three or four points, and I'm going to my seat. Uh, first, got to deal with the man's condition. The Bible says uh, he's crippled from birth. He's a crippled man. Which means uh, that the man has never functioned at full capacity. He's a crippled man. He's crippled. He's never known the full usage of his bodily limbs. He's crippled from birth. Uh, the man does not know his true potential. He's a crippled man. He functions at less than uh, what full capacity would look like. He's crippled from birth. He doesn't know himself outside of his condition. Uh, uh, and, and brothers and sisters, by the way, it's no coincidence that the first Pentecost episode that we see after Pentecost Day involves a man. Uh, I, I, come on, say, it's a man. Uh, it, it's amazing that God is so purposeful in what he does. Uh, this could have been a woman. Could have been a child. But God shows us a man. That's not unlike God. He starts normally with a man. I, 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 know, I know sisters don't take that wrong. I'm just trying to tell you God normally starts with a man. And if you're going to have any major kingdom movement, uh, you've got to start with a man. Uh, come on. I mean, Genesis tells us that in the beginning God created heaven and earth and then he created a man. And then he made, brought forth a woe man, but he started with a, when he wanted to save Israel, he got him a man. Sisters, I want y'all to start shouting about God, please save these men. Please, please, please change these men. Please work on the brother. Please get the man right. Please. Don't, don't think that that puts you in second place. You're still in first place. In fact, can't nobody take your place. But you ought to want God to deal with these men. We got a crippled man condition. 
Can I tell you that that's what's wrong with families? That's what's wrong with communities? We got crippled men trying to be daddies, crippled men trying to be mothers, her husbands, crippled men trying to be leaders. We need men who are no longer crippled. Spiritually, psychologically, emotionally crippled men. Uh, he's a crippled man, and when you're a crippled man, you end up a carried man. The Bible says they carry the man every day, and there are a whole lot of ladies carrying men. Y'all won't shout back at me now. Have, have you ever seen man that got to be carried? Mama still carrying you. You 40 years old. You Mama carrying you. You still at your mama's house. Driving your mama's car. Spinning your mama's daddy. That's a carried crippled man. I need, I need somebody to help me finish this. Come on coach, help me finish. I, I, there's just so many crippled men being carried. We're so glad you tuned in today again to the Empower by Faith broadcast. I want to just give you the special announcement before we finish the message today. That is, we value you. I appreciate you. Thank you for praying for this ministry. Thank you for supporting us. And we need more partners just like you to support, to give, and to pray. Support, give, and pray because it takes people who love God, who believe in the message of the Word of God to support the ministry. So be sure and do that. You can go to the website that's on the screen or dial the number, however you want to do it. Thank you for your support. Your contributions are, of course, tax deductible, but they go a long way in helping us to keep this message of the Word of God on the air. We're reaching people, changing lives together, and partnership is the way that happens, all right? Thank you for tuning in. And don't forget, hey, follow me on social media. I'm on all of it, Facebook, Instagram, I mean, Twitter, I'm on all of the social media handles. You want to be sure if to YouTube, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got messages out there that will bless your life every day for every occasion. Okay? We are full-fledged ministry here at the COF. Thank God for you. Now stay tuned for the rest of the message, and I'll be right back at the close. I need, I need somebody to help me finish this. Come on, coach, help me finish. I, I, there's just so many crippled men being carried by mamas and carried by your daddy, carried by your grandmama. Yeah. It's an ugly sight to see a crippled man being a carried man. Being a carried man, she going to work while you stay at the house. Carried man, carried man, ca ca carried man. The system got to carry you. Crippled men end up carried men, crippled spiritually, crippled psychologically, crippled emotionally, crippled. And all the crippled men not on street corners. That's some crippled men wearing suits and ties. Crippled men wearing white shirts. Crippled men. Oh. Anybody here ever seen a crippled man? End up being a carried man. Uh, crippled men, a carried man, they got to they gotta, they gotta have a hustle. That gets over on people. Like this man knew how to hustle folk out of their chain rather than being able to go to work for himself. Can't feed himself, can't provide for himself, got to take advantage of somebody else in order to make it. That's a crippled man that's got to be caring. And it's also a compromised man. Uh, this, this man, uh, his condition confines him to living beneath his purpose. His condition made, his, made him dependent on people. His condition hid his potential. Uh, as long as he remained in this condition, he would never live on the level of, that God created him for. And there are too many men who are living far beneath their created level. God purposed you to be an entrepreneur and you're selling drugs. Purposed you to own an enterprise and, and you got a job you don't like. 
purpose you to lead a family and change a neighborhood, uh, but, but, but you're living beneath that potential because uh, as long as you're crippled spiritually, psychologically, mentally, emotionally, you can't function at the level that God intended when he created you. Uh, let me hurry. Uh, not only do we have to look at his condition, but, but check out the conversation. He asked Peter for money. It's a brief conversation, but it's a powerful conversation. He asked him for money. The man on the ground asked Peter and John for money, and his conversation reveals much. It reveals his self-perception, uh, how he sees himself, because he's on the ground. And, and he's been on the ground a long time. And so his self-perception is, uh, all I am worth is your spare change. Uh, uh, the best I can do today is get something from somebody else. I can't create, I can't produce, I can't start, I can't change. I, I, the best I can do is what somebody else lets me have. Uh, that, that's his self-perception. Uh, it also gives us a look at the man's, into the man's outlook on his future. Oh, all he asked for is enough to make it today. Because he got to be carried back there tomorrow. That's a bleak future. If all you see in your future is more of the same, you crippled. But I want to talk to somebody here who knows that your tomorrow is going to be better than your today. When, when your mind gets right with God, when your heart gets right with God, when you're in the place that God purposed you, you can look into your future and say, I see my future and it looks, it looks better. My ladder is going to be greater than my past because the God I serve is able to do exceedingly abundantly that more than I can ask, think, or even imagine. All this man is looking forward to is enough to get through the day. And then I'll beg for some more on tomorrow. But thank God, Peter and John, Peter and John, these Holy Spirit-empowered men uh, show up uh, who've been to Pentecost. And you need somebody who's been to Pentecost to show up. I, I said, as you need somebody who's been to Pentecost. <laughs> I, I said, you need somebody who's been to Pentecost. To, to show up. Uh, thank God they didn't sidestep the man. Thank God they did not ignore the man. Thank God they didn't take the man for granted. They engaged the man. See, see, when you don't have Pentecost power, you know when not to stop. Let me say it differently. I'm, I don't think they got it, Minister Tommy. I, I, I'm saying, you know, listen. When you don't have a certain amount of money, there's some stores you don't go to. Because you know your money ain't that long. When your game is on one level, there's some course you don't try to play on. Because you know your game won't work. And I want to tell you, when you, don't, when you don't have Pentecost power, there's some conversations you won't have. B because you know what you got to work with won't handle what's in front of you. Can, can, I, I, can, I, can I go on and say it like I feel it? I mean, that's a cowardly Christian. That's a cowardly church. That's acting religious and full of pomp and circumstance. Got a title as long as your name is. Uh, but you can't handle problems when you face them. Because you know you don't have power for real. Your power only works in the church house. Where everybody else is faking too. But when you go out to the real world. Where there are people who are sick, lame and crippled. Your power doesn't work out there. So you don't need... You don't, you, <laughs> Your shout only works on Sunday morning, but when the sanctuary is empty and there's nobody but you and the devil you got to deal with on the outside, all of a sudden uh, your mouth shuts up. You have no power, no prayer, no anointing, and no authority. I wish you would give somebody a high five and say, neighbor, if your anointing won't work after Sunday, it's artificial Sunday morning. 
authentic anointing will work outside just like it works inside. Oh, I need somebody here now. Jason, I'm almost home. Will you just give somebody a high five and say, neighbor, when was the last time your anointing worked on the outside? Where the crippled folk are, where the conditions are, where the crisis is, where people are on the bottom, where people are on the ground with issues that nobody else can solve. Oh, I feel it here today. Uh, uh, I just need, I don't need everybody, but, but, but two, three more witnesses will help me. B -b because I'm, 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 I'm preaching some stuff here now. I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in a war zone right about here. I, I, I can feel the tension in the atmosphere. The demonic is trying to prevent the truth from being spoken because we've been faking and shaking and it looked like you were all of that in a bag of chips. But now we're in this era and in this age of the Antichrist. Where if you ain't got real anointing, it's going to make you look like a fool. And that's why folk are not showing up at church no more. Because they figured out that church folk been faking so long. The question is, can you deal with the man who's crippled at the gate? outside of the church who haven't read the Bible whose mind is confused, who's drunk and intoxicated with stuff that you ain't never used who can't get up off the ground because he's never been able to figure out life. What do you have to offer that individual who's been in prison for four times and still don't know how to stay out? What can you do with the man who's so high he can't come down and so low he can't get up. I dare you to look at someone and say, neighbor, we got to have some Pentecost episode. We need some people who are so full of the Holy Ghost in this dispensation who are not going by last year's playbook. You got to have something now that's ready and able to deal with the real situation. I'm closing now. But Peter and John are having this conversation. They engage the man. First of all, the conversation says, uh, I'm concerned. I'm concerned. I, I'm con you matter. I'm concerned. Secondly, the conversation says, uh, not only am I concerned, but I'm also committed. Uh, I'm stopped because I'm committed to doing something about your situation. Folk outside the church need to know the church is concerned and the church is committed. But then they also need to know you got confidence because their conversation said I got confidence. Watch this now. Silver or gold. I don't have that. But such as I have. I know what I got. I believe in what I have. I'm confident that with what I got, you're going to forget about silver and gold. What money could do for you won't touch what I'm about to do. What do you have, Peter? Come on, Jason, I'm done. In the name. Oh, my God. Is there anybody here have confidence in what you've got when you have Pentecost power? You have confidence in the name of Jesus. Get this now. The name of Jesus always has power. But some folk don't have confidence to use the name. Oh, but thank God. When you're full of the Holy Spirit, it builds your confidence in the power that's in his name. I'm trying not to get too happy, but I just can't help myself. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Yes, tell your neighbor the last point is the man's conversion. The Bible says immediately, suddenly, at once, all of a sudden, yes, right then. 
Then the man got up. Then that day, that moment, that place, that street, right then. Yes, because the man, yes, got something. Yes, that only God could give him. He got converted outside the church house. The we sincerely hope you're enjoying the ministry of Bishop James Dixon. We also hope you appreciate the work we're doing to impact our community and the world. To keep up with Dr. Dixon and all we do, follow Bishop Dixon on all social media. Subscribe to his YouTube at Bishop James Dixon. Follow Bishop D on Facebook and Instagram. Stay connected and you'll be amazed at what we're doing to impact the world for Jesus. Stay connected and stay empowered by faith. This series, Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire, Holy Ghost Power, is something not to miss. I'm telling you, I enjoy preaching it, and I know you are being blessed hearing it. Be sure and tell others about it. Join us right here every morning because we're going to deal with this Holy Ghost Power. The church has unfortunately learned how to operate being successful without being supernatural. And God has purposed the church to operate in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. And when we do, we become undeniable, unmistakable, and unstoppable through the power of God. Well, meet us back here tomorrow morning for another broadcast of Empowered by Faith. And watch your life go higher. We thank you for tuning in today. We're certain this end time message has been relatable, resourceful, and is refueling you to want to make changes in order to be a change agent for yourself, your family, your community, state, and yes, this nation. This is not it. There's more. To receive this message in its entirety, simply go to the communityoffaith.org, click on the e-giving prompt. Here you'll click on the donation button and you'll find this message available as an MP3 or MP4. Or you may purchase by text, texting the word GIVE, that's G-I-V-E to 713-338-9011. Select this message and format preferences. Both are secure ways to obtain this message today.